Out of my own journal, um, I, I wrote this. I felt like God told me this, um, I think it was yesterday morning. Come to me first. Do not solve life's problems without me. And uh, I was like, wow. We often go running off into the world uh, <laughs> without spending time with Jesus. And so in Second Peter, it's there's this um, this encouragement. And so I think faith just means you're choosing to trust in something that you can't see uh, as if you can see it. And when you put your faith in God, then there's this abundant partnership that ends with the participation in his divine nature. So to me, faith is just the door in. And so the first thing we pursue after faith uh, is uh, goodness uh, or also uh, translated as virtue. So um, uh, the first thing after faith is you want to become a different person. It's still very tangible in my experience. And God wants us to know him in that way. Mm -hmm. That's good. Well, if you're pursuing goodness, then uh, the third step is uh, is knowledge. And uh, some people think that knowledge and faith are against each other. But um, but Peter seems to think that as if as you're attempting to become a better person, then it's going to take knowledge to do that. Dallas Willard talks about knowledge as being interactive relationship. Yeah, the biblical notion of knowledge is not just information. But knowledge implies in the scriptures implies an interactive relationship. Knowledge of piano means that your fingers are interacting with the piano keys and you're learning how to uh, partner with the piano. And we're interacting with God, but unlike the piano, uh, God is interacting with us. And there's this mutuality going on as we participate in, in its divine nature. And so we add to knowledge uh, self-control. And I like that because it seems like as we're pursuing uh, uh, virtue, uh, goodness, and we're learning to interact with God, then we find out something gets in the way of that. And it's the very thing that Peter refers to earlier. It's our evil or toxic desires. And at some point or another, if you're going to move forward with God, you have to deal with sin in your life. What Peter's saying is if, if we're going to uh, actually grow internally, we have to deal with uh, uh, sin. We, we have to learn how to exercise self-control. Yeah, I, I think people feel like at times that they can, when they're out of control, that they have no control. And we have been given dominion. We've been given um, a, a chance to govern our own bodies, our own environment, our own selves. And we have, in essence, we have a small umbrella that we are in charge of in that we can tell our bodies, we can tell our minds, we can... We have control over those things. Now, we may give away control, but we still, to, to, to give away control means that we had control in the first place. Yeah, Self-control uh, takes us to endurance. Because or perseverance. Perseverance, because it's not an instant. Learning self-control is not instant. Perseverance speaks about the process of learning self-control. And anyone who's been married for a long time knows what perseverance is. <laughs> um, and that's not, uh, you know, we've been married 37 years, which is not as long as others, but it's been longer than, than, than most. You know, than most. <laughs> and uh, in it, all, in all of it, of course, at the end of this list, we end up with agape love. We end up with love. And in our marriage relationship we end up with love but sometimes it's just a it's just the long haul it's the it's the um pointing your head your mind and your heart towards the process the the long haul the getting through the highs and the lows and realizing this is gonna it's gonna take a lifetime yeah so this uh sort of soft form of love where we just start have affection for each other we have warm feelings for each other and we appreciate each other ultimately goes into talk about participating in the divine nature where we are living agape uh, selfless love love that puts the other person first and that's that's where we end up and we can measure ourselves with that if we think we're doing well but we're 
we don't love people around us, then we have to go back maybe toward the beginning of this list. And even if we have to go back to faith, okay, Lord, I believe you're there. I want to work with you. But we can't bypass Peter's definition of the mature Christian, which is someone walking in love. Therefore, my brothers, be all the more eager to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, you will never fall and you will receive a rich welcome into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. At the end of the day, at the end of my life, I hope it I hope people say that I was a believer, I was a follower of Jesus, and I encouraged others um, to follow Christ. At the end of Second Peter in chapter 3, verse 14. So then, dear friends, since you are looking forward to this, make every effort to be found spotless, blameless, and at peace with him. And then in 18, but grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen. Um, And as we close second, Peter, I just wanted to let you know that if you had any questions about spiritual direction, feel free to email me and um, I'd be happy to let you know more about it. And um, we need, um, we need help sometimes in our walks with Jesus. And this is one way to do it is to, to engage with a, a spiritual director. And it's been phenomenal in my life. And um, I know my friends and families have commented on my own change in living my life with Jesus. And getting to know Jesus more and more is the highest calling for all of us. But especially as I'm 60, I'm looking to the end of my life. I want to know Jesus better than I did the day before. Yeah.